My goal has always been for Maddie to be a tax-paying citizen. It has always been a tax-paying citizen who votes. And I, that was really my dream when she started out in transition, sort of at age 14 or 15, when we were asked in Pennsylvania to start talking about transition and what that looks like, life after high school. I was always thinking my end goal was for her to work, to not spend all those years of public education, 12 plus years, and have it go to waste and have her sit at home on my couch. I wanted her, even if it was a volunteer experience or an internship, to go out in the work world, earn money that is her own, and to feel proud. Proud that she works and she contributes and can buy things she wants and feel good about herself because I think work makes people feel good. What I can't do is replicate a work environment here at home. So all the things people learn at work, how to be part of a team, how to do things on your own and report back to a boss, how to take direction from a boss, how to work with one coworker, how to work with seven coworkers, how to do your part and rely on somebody else to do their part, or like we've all experienced, have a, a coworker not do their part and you have to take up the slack. Those things I can't replicate at home. So I was hoping in a work environment, people would teach her that. Her coworkers and her colleagues will teach her all those skills that all of us learn how to do at work. How to do something you don't wanna do at work, which all of us do every day, things we don't wanna do. That's part of learning to be a grown up and how to do things you don't wanna do every day and to find joy in the things you do wanna do every day and to find growth in that area for her because there's things about her work that she loves to do and those are skill sets to build upon. When we first started exploring work situations when she was 18, when she had graduated from her high school, and she was in that land between 18 and age 21 when she was going to actually leave the school system, we started talking about places Maddie could work. And often um, in the world of disability, there's a saying, food, flowers, or filth. You can work with food, you can work with flowers, or you can work cleaning something. And those were sort of the areas shoved, people were shoved into. Um, and that still remains true to this day. There are certain categories that we think of that are worthy of people with disabilities working in those areas. So immediately they put her in situations like um, a, a thrift store. Well, Maddie cannot operate a cash register, things like that. That was a challenge. And she was asked to do things above her skill set or skills she had at that time. Um, she was put in a hospital setting where Maddie does not like to be around sick people. She likes people to be healthy, happy, and fine all the time. That was not a setting for her because she, you're going to see sick people in a hospital and you're going to see people in all sorts of states of emotional distress. And that is distressing for her to see people in emotional distress. Whether they're happy or sad, it, it's unregulating for her. So. When we were looking for jobs, we looked at things that she liked to do. Maddie loves to organize, she loves to stay busy, she likes to be on her feet moving. So we looked for job opportunities like that for her, almost like carving out a job for her. And we found one in a local resale shop that was tiny enough. It was not a giant, uh, what you think of as a thrift store. It was a resale shop where they needed someone to like put tags on clothing and put clothing away. Well, Maddie loves organization, skirts with skirts, tops with tops, and put tags on things. There was a routine to that. We looked for places where that were small enough that had people who got to know her because I knew that Maddie wouldn't function well in a large environment like a giant chain store or something like that. Too many people, too much overturn of staff, and people don't get to know her. So she needed a small little place. One of those places happened to be a local deli who needed someone to help out peeling potatoes. And while we most of us think that would be an awful job, for Maddie, that is a beautiful job. She loves to move. She loves to do something again and again and again and again. She loves to have a finished task upon completion. The potato is peeled. You've done your job. On to the next potato. Peel it. You're done your job. That really worked well for her. So we looked for situations like that. And there were failures along the way. There were, there were stores that did not welcome her. There were places that were not a good fit for her. There were colleagues who were not welcoming to her. So it took a lot of time to find her niche of where she could present her skill set. The community, I think, would need to join in because we're all living together in this in this community together. Plus, all of our tax dollars have gone to the education of these students with autism all these years. So your tax dollars have gone to educate and support these, these young adults, these now adults, 
And now the tax dollars are going to waste because they're not working. They're not in a place where they can contribute. Um, what they can also do is urge their employer to hire people with disabilities. That's wonderful. Every person who works at any establishment can certainly say, I have a job here that I think would be perfect for an agency to come and look at see if someone can work doing that job. Whether it's mail delivery or food prep or something done, done in your office or a task. There is a job at each one of our places of employment that can be filled with by a person with disabilities. I just know it. Visit us online at wqed.org slash autism for more web extras, links to resources, and to watch the documentary Autism Aging Out, 